Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate at St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. We are beginning a series of videos on the beginnings of Christianity. And this, our first Do You Know series question with regards to that is, do you know how Christianity rose out of a completely Jewish context? I would like to begin with a little story with regards to my daughter when we were preparing First Communion. Uh, we were talking about Jesus as being a full-fledged Jew and uh, living in, with the land of Israel and practicing Judaism. And so she said, well, you know, if Jesus was a Jew and we are disciples of Jesus, how come we are not Jews? And that was an insightful question for her, and I think it's an insightful question that most Christians ask with regards to the origins of Christianity. Um, it's important to realize that we, as disciples of Jesus, are following a person who was a Jew all of his life, uh, and yet we, we claim to be followers of Jesus, call ourselves Christians, and uh, we believe him to be not only a Jew, but we also believe him to be the Son of God. How did this happen? And so it's important to explore just a bit of the origins of this uh, eventual split that will occur, the first split that would occur within Christianity in the context of Judaism. Uh, so again, it's important to remember that Jesus was a Jew, born a Jew, lived a Jew, died a Jew, rose a Jew. He never had any intention, from what we can tell, of beginning any new religious movement or new faith tradition or whatever. He was a Jew speaking to fellow Jews, so typically in the manner of a prophet, challenging his fellow Jews to convert and to make sure that they return and keep fidelity to the promises of the covenant, like many of the prophets of old. And so, in that kind of a context, he really uh, uh, welcomed uh, followers and called followers to follow him. And some of the, a uh, good number of the Jews accepted him as the long-awaited Jewish Messiah, while at the same time, a number of Jews did not accept him as the long-awaited Messiah. And there was some tension between those two groups, and yet everything seemed to be fine. What really creates a major issue is after Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection, Jews who had accepted him as a long way to Messiah began to experience him as being alive and present in their midst. And so they were convinced that this was the long-awaited Messiah and began to preach him to the entire world. Not only his words, but also how he modeled what God's desires were for us and how we wish to live our lives. And so as a result of that, what starts to happen is we have a significant number of Jews who begin to follow Jesus as Messiah within the context of Judaism as a whole. They went to the temple, they worshipped at the synagogues, they celebrated at home, but yet they continued to believe in Jesus. Um, now what starts to happen is they preached the, a number of non-Jews, what we call Gentiles, uh, were attracted to the message that they were giving and began to desire to, have a, to be disciples of Jesus as well. And now Jews who had accepted Jesus had to really struggle as to how do we handle this? Uh, do we actually welcome Gentiles into our midst? What would Jesus have done and so on? And so there was a, a kind of a conflict within Jews who had accepted Jesus. By first, uh, some of them felt that if, peop if Gentiles wanted to follow Jesus, they had to first become Jews and practice Jewish uh, uh, practices, law and um, purity laws and so on. They had to be faithful Jews first before they could follow Jesus since Jesus was a Jew. Other Jews who had accepted Jesus said, no, people like Paul and a number of other uh, people who went out preaching felt, no, that Jesus was the fulfillment of all Jewish law, and therefore all that was required for Gentiles was to believe in Jesus and live according to the model that Jesus offered us. And so a uh, tension kind of built up between, uh, among Jews who had accepted Jesus, between those who wanted to, um, uh, Gentiles to be Jews, uh, these, this group was referred to as the Judaizers, and those Jews who accepted Jesus but did, did saw that all that was required of Gentile was belief in Jesus. Uh, 
tensions continued to grow within this group, and eventually there was uh, so the so-called Council of Jerusalem, which was held in the year 50, in which Paul and people of his mindset met with the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem, and they developed a compromise. And that compromise was that Gentiles would be welcome into discipleship of Jesus, but they had to first uh, at least not be subject to circumcision, but certainly to be to the um, ritual laws and the purity laws and dietary laws and so on. And so as a result of that, uh, Paul and his followers felt that this was completely way off base and as a result continued to preach that all that was required was faith in Jesus and living the way Jesus modeled for us. This set up a tension that eventually will um, lead to a greater conflict within Judaism um, and it will also um, set up the tension is it true that with, uh, with Jesus coming and with the long way to Messiah coming, Judaism had to change and had to change by being welcoming of all for the message was for all. And so I hope this has helped a bit to explain how uh, the uh, Christianity began to arose out of a Jewish context. And I hope we will return again to more Do You Know series question where we will continue to explore this issue as we go into the developments that occurred within Judaism that eventually led to the split. So thank you very much and I hope to see you again.